Hello everyone, this is Dr. Patricia Dickinson, and this presentation is for week two of ITIL 516. I know we started to get our feet wet about what it takes to become an elementary teacher, and specifically in the subject area of math instruction. So let's do our week one wrap up. If you get a link to this Google slide, you can create your own slide and share with us five things. Share two things you've learned, two things you want to know more about, and one question that you still have. So just like I showed you last week, you'll need to create a slide. You can copy this slide and it will just give you the same exact template as you see here. And tell us what, what you've learned in week one. We talked about some of the common uh, challenges for learning mathematics. You've had an opportunity to look at some assessment data for elementary students. Um, we also had some research articles that looked at some common problems for math instruction. And hopefully you've gotten some good strategies that you can use to work and support all of your learners, not just students with exceptionalities and students that are English language learners, but students that find mathematics a challenge. And as you share it in your week one discussion, this is something you might have also experienced as a student. We also had our first week readings, and hopefully you're enjoying the book, Teaching Outside the Box. You've got to learn some new things about what it means to integrate technology and what are some common um, frameworks for designing math instruction, whether you're looking at the SAMR model or you're looking at the TPAC framework. How we design technology is, again, it's a tool in our toolbox that we use to support learners, whether they're um, we're learning using technology to create an, an active engagement like we're using here with our Google Slides, whether we're showing another representation or we're getting students to actually manipulate and use um, some virtual manipulatives, or whether technology is being used in math instruction to help students develop their computational fluency. So technology has a lot of different resources, a lot of different um, products in terms of how we use it and how we get to facilitate student learning. But ultimately, technology is only as powerful as you, the teacher, and choices that you make in designing instruction. So week one, we got to look at some assessments, and in week three, we're going to use our assessment data to design instruction for our learners. And you got to read about our different case studies of students that you may find in the elementary classroom. So in week two, our learning outcomes for you is for you to observe and identify how math instruction is facilitated. So you're going to get to do some fieldwork observation. Then you look at some standards for mathematical practices, and we have the eight standards for mathematical practices. We'll talk a little bit about those tonight. And when we look at those standards, we're going to think about when we're out in the field and working and we're observing teachers, and there's a lot of videos that we have incorporated in our course. Think about these standards for mathematical practices and how do they support student learning? How do they promote metacognition, which is when students are thinking about their thinking? And how does it help frame instruction so that students are seeing multiple representations? All right, you are also working on a group project this week and in week one, you've had an opportunity to get into your groups. Now it's time for you to think about those learning progressions. Remember, the learning progressions is how a concept develops across the K-6 span. So we're going to look at how these concepts developed and give you an opportunity to identify some common student misconceptions, what students develop conceptually in terms of their understanding, and what are the instructional methods that will help our students support um, in understanding and acquiring this mathematical knowledge. Your assignments for this week include two discussion boards. The first discussion board, you'll look at several videos and you will determine which video you want to discuss. Select one of the videos that are in our week two assignments. Think about how you see a balanced approach to math instruction. Remember, a balanced approach is when you're designing instruction that provides the students an opportunity to develop not only their procedural knowledge, so that's their step-by-step -step knowledge of how to do something, but also their conceptual understanding. 
So do they really understand the concept and what the concepts imply and how the concepts can be um, integrated in terms of the real world application? All right, and so you'll be looking at this approach in terms of the videos that you see, and then you'll share your beliefs on the values of reinforcing foundational skills in your daily math practice. In our second discussion board, you'll be selecting a daily routine from chapter four of Teaching Outside the Box. You'll discuss how you would include this routine in your practice, so you can select a particular grade level that you'd like to teach, and You'd also identify the specific Common Core State Standards and Math Practice Standards that you believe this routine will meet. We have two assignments this week. Again, the first one is a field work. You'll have to look at the supplied form that we've provided you that's aligned with the Math Practice Standards. And then you will observe a K-6 Common Core Math lesson. You may include pictures of student work or teacher instruction videos. And they can be used, but you may, not, you may also have to require the student's permission. All right, it is not required for you to do pictures of student work. Let me clarify. You just need to use the supplied form, record your observations, and then you'll be submitting your group presentation. The group presentation shows your understanding of how a concept develops across the K-6 band. Now remember, our book, Teaching Outside the Box, talks about the learning progressions. It gives you several resources that you can look at to determine how the concepts developed and what are some conceptual ways that you can represent the learning and progression of learning in a concept. We encourage you to be creative here. You might want to use a Google Slideshow, Prezi, create a YouTube video, or you can even create a website and talk about to your peers, to your students, to your teachers, to other parents that you may anticipate teaching. How do these concepts develop? Be sure you include references in a space for other people to leave comments on your presentation. Include 